In the last pricing table video from the blog, I announced that we'll also be making a pricing table from scratch video. And I asked you guys to vote which one of these three pricing table examples would you like to see us build with Thrive Architect. And you guys picked this one. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna build this pricing table with Thrive Architect. So let's get going. Hello, I'm David from Thrive Themes and let's jump right in. Let's start building this pricing table. So here we are in Thrive Architect and the first thing is obviously to add the pricing table element. So we're going to place it on the page and obviously from time to time we'll have a look at the original pricing table. So now the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of two of these three boxes. We're going to work on one of them and then in the end we'll duplicate it and make some tweaks. So to get rid of these two boxes we'll go on the sidebar and simply remove them from here. Now to make this look better we're going to minimize the width and align it to the center. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of this border here because as you can see, there's no such thing in the original pricing table. So we're gonna click on the content box. So not on the pricing table and go to borders and corners, click on none. And now as you can see, we have a clean looking content box. And now if you take a look at the original pricing table, as you can see on each box, we sort of have two areas, right? The top one with the color and the bottom one. In our case, to do this, we need to add two content boxes inside the big content box. So I'm gonna drag a content box, place it inside. And now we need to make sure that the content box fits perfectly on the side as well in the big content box. So we'll go to layout and position. And in our case, the exact value here will be minus 33 as you can see so we will basically make it larger in order for it to touch the margins of the big content box and now we'll duplicate it so that we have two content boxes and now we'll drag the content in only first of all we need to get rid of the unnecessary content so we'll have a look here as you can see in the top content box we have this part here this uh, business text and the dollar symbol and the number and in our case we have a bit more content here a bit more unnecessary content since this first text here is only uppercase we're going to remove it since we don't need uppercase letters and we're also going to need this slash month text right so now we're going to click on this paragraph press control and then click it again and select these two elements while pressing control continually, right? So we're gonna drag them now and place them in the first content box and select the style list, press control and hold and press and click on the button as well. And then simply drag them in the second content box as well. And now we have two areas as well on the big content box. Now, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that the top content box touches the top of the big content box. So we're gonna click on it, go to layout and position here, and the exact value in our case would be minus 59. So you need to make sure that there is no space left between the top content box and the top of the big content box. And the next modification is to click on the second content box and make the space inside it a little bit bigger so that the content isn't that close to the margin. So we'll work with the paddings here and we'll introduce a 25 side padding for the second content box. Now moving forward, we're gonna customize the top content box further. So as you can see, it has this color here along with a gradient. So we're gonna click on it go to background style, click on the color picker. And here we're gonna paste the color code that we need. And we will make this color a global color because we're gonna use it in many other places on the pricing table. So we're gonna click on the plus icon, save it as a global color. As you can see, we have royal blue and we are going to apply it. And now we will make the text 
look white, right? Like in the original pricing table. So while we have the content box selected, we're gonna click on typography and make the text white. Now we're gonna work with the paragraph that we have on the top. Only if we look at the original uh, pricing table, as you can see, we have one more line of text here that we do not have in our case. So we're gonna select this line of text here, we're gonna duplicate it, and we're going to place it here above the styled list. And we're gonna customize it later. For now, we're gonna focus our attention on the first content box. So this text here, we'll write business, we're gonna make it non italic and we are going to increase the font size now moving forward we have to decrease the space between the text and the price so go to layout and position and here we're going to make it something like this and at the top also we need some space so we'll leave it like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and add the decoration right here. In Thrive Architect, it is called Fancy Divider. So we're gonna apply it here. So click on the content box and go to decorations, select the bottom part because here we're gonna apply it, Fancy Divider, and we're gonna select the waves. Only, yeah, right now it doesn't look too good. So we need to adjust it maybe something like this and we need some more space on the content box so click on content box options and increase the height a bit something like that maybe right and now maybe we also need to yeah we'll go ahead and replace the price this one needs to make it a bit bigger i think yeah, and we'll work with the layout and position to make it something like this. Right, and now we will also add a gradient on this content box so that we don't have only this blue color. So background style, gradient, and we're gonna minimize the opacity on this side a bit. In Thrive Architect, you must apply a gradient at the top if you have a decoration applied, because otherwise they might, you know, they might interfere and they might not get along too well. So we'll now select this side and we'll maybe place a color like this. We'll place the color code here and here we will have it something like that maybe. Right, and now moving forward, we can basically leave it like this right here and we will focus our attention on the second content box here. So first of all, this text here, we will have to make it black and also we'll select it and make it bold and make it non-italic. Maybe we'll also increase the size a bit to something like that and now maybe we'll add a little bit more text here something random who's mate right we'll add the last two words and to make it look like this we'll actually select it and align it to the left and now we'll go to layout and position and align the entire box of the paragraph to the center and decrease the width of this only that we need a little bit more text i don't know something like that so that we have two lines right we'll add one more word like that okay and now we will have to decrease the space that we have between these two elements so go to here we are in layout and position decrease the bottom margin to maybe something like that. So now we're basically done with this text, we can focus our attention on the styled list. So this basically uses right a bullet point list with the predominant blue color that we already have set 
as a global color. So we can click on an icon and as you can see, group editing is activated. So we'll go to icon options and select the global color. And from icon here, we'll look for something like circle, right? There it is. And we can simply decrease the size a bit, something like that maybe, and make the text to be a bit darker, right? It isn't quite black, but I think something like this, right? And now we can focus our attention on the button. So click on the button and we'll go to button options and select the style and it uses this rounded style. Only we'll go to borders and corners and I don't think it uses that much roundness. Let's say at the corners, maybe we'll leave it like that. Only the size is a bit bigger for the button. So we're going to click on line height and increase it a bit, maybe something like that. And now we'll also go to background style, click on the color picker and apply the global color and type here purchase. And as you can see, maybe we have to decrease the space between these two elements a bit. So layout and position, move the button closer to the styled list, something like that. And also, yeah, maybe this gradient here isn't really well. Now, obviously, in this video, we're not going to nail the exact colors because we are only looking at an image and we don't have the exact color code of that, right? So I'm going to click on this. Well, something like this. And now the last thing that we need to do, as you can see, the borders of the entire content box are a bit rounded. So we need to work a bit on that. We click on the first content box, go to borders and corners and we we'll select the top left corner and adjust it a bit 10 give the value 10 to the other one as well and now click on the big content box and we'll use the bottom corners as well to make them round and now we're basically ready to duplicate this content box so in order to duplicate it simply click on the pricing table so not on the content box and go to pricing table here and simply duplicate it twice. And in order for it to look better, we'll increase the max width to something like that, right? And now we'll go to pricing table and minimize the guts of width because we wanna place them as close to each other as possible. As you can see, the middle box is a bit bigger than the other two and the other two are also a bit under the middle box. So first of all, we're going to click on it and we're going to increase the minimum height and we're going to click on this lock button to make sure that we're only editing the box that we have selected. So we'll increase the minimum height a bit, something, something like that maybe, and also click on this content box and we'll also increase the top padding a bit. To something like that and now we can go ahead and move it a bit towards the top and now the next thing that we need to do is we need to select the entire content box and make sure that the z index here in the layout and position and advanced option is bigger than the other two and now we'll simply select the other two content boxes so this one we make sure that is locked and here we'll go to edit position in the advanced layout and position options and we'll make sure to move it more to the right. As you can see, we'll leave something like 15 and save position and we'll do the same with the other one. So we'll lock it, go here at the position and make sure that we edit the other side and we'll add a 15 value here as well. And as you can see, the middle 
box is a bit bigger than the other two, but maybe we can move them even more. Let's see. Maybe 30, something like that. And on this one as well, right? Just so, yeah, now the text isn't quite visible, but we can click on the content box here and set this to something like 35, right? Now, in the original one, the text isn't really visible as well, right? But we're gonna make sure that in this case, the text is visible. And also the button here needs to be further down, right? So, right, we don't wanna edit all of them. We're gonna lock this one and we're gonna move it a bit down, something like this. And now we need to work on the text here up top and on the buttons, right? So this button here, we're gonna go to background style. We're gonna make sure that this one isn't edited, right? So we'll only edit this one and this one, and we'll simply change the color for these buttons. So go to background style, and here we're gonna unlink the global color and set it to white. And now we'll go to typography and let's see what color the the text is, is blue. So we'll place the blue color, the blue global color, and we'll make it bold as well. And also we'll add some borders to it, right? Only we're not gonna add white borders. I'm gonna add blue borders as well, and maybe something like that. The last thing that we need to do is change the text here. So we only have to change the price here to 26, and here change it to premium, and 73. Right, now maybe we'll have to decrease the text a bit, right, so that the middle one is bigger. So 33, something like that. We'll increase this a bit more, right? Although in the original one, we don't have such a big difference and a bit of letter spacing here, right? So in the text to something like that. And as you can see, this is basically how this pricing table is built with Thrive Architect. Now, unfortunately, maybe the only aspect that we didn't cover properly is the color, but if we would have had the exact color code and everything, we would have been able to cover it properly. And also maybe this text here, we could make it more a bit to the side, right? So something like that. So we'll add 292 here as well. As you can see, as simple as that. And basically this concludes this video of building a pricing table from scratch in Thrive Architect. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please leave a comment below. And if you have any further questions regarding this entire process, also I'll be more than happy to get back to you with a comment. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.